As of August 2025, Apple has more than $36 billion sitting in the bank. They finish each fiscal quarter with more cash than many countries have. Today, we'll look at why Apple keeps so much money in the bank, what that says about their plan, and how smart spending could turn weak spots into real strengths. At the end of the video, I'll connect Apple's giant checking account to something much closer to home, your monthly power bill. So, why keep so much cash? Cash is like oxygen at Apple's size. It pays workers on time all over the world. It keeps parts moving when a ship is late or a port closes. It lets Apple pay early for hard to find chips and screens so products don't get delayed. That's the daily reason. There's also a deeper reason, choice. With cash, Apple can move fast when timing matters. If a partner has trouble, Apple can help and keep things on track. If a new idea suddenly works, Apple can fund it right away. In tech, speed with confidence wins. Cash makes speed feel safe. Still, some people ask, is holding this much cash a waste? Other companies spend big on artificial intelligence right now. It can look like Apple parked a shiny sports car in the garage. Nice, but not moving. Here's the trade-off. Apple promises polish and privacy. If they rush and miss on quality or safety, they don't just risk sales. They risk your trust. Cash is a cushion. It lets Apple test many ideas at once cancel the weak ones, and ship only what feels right. It's not avoiding risk, but it's taking smart risks without putting the whole brand in danger. And if that makes sense, where are Apple's weak spots that need care? Even with strong chips and growing services, a few areas stand out. First, AI helpers. Siri came early, but people now expect easy talk, better reasoning, and real help with tasks. Second, too much depends on the iPhone. The iPhone is still at the center. If iPhone sales slow, the whole company feels it. Third is price. Premium devices limit growth in places where budgets are tight. Fourth, rules and laws. App stores, browser choices, and open platform rules are changing how Apple must operate. If Apple ignores these issues, they get bigger. If Apple faces them head on, they can turn into advantages. Let's start with AI. Can AI become Apple's biggest chance to shine? Not by bragging about how big a model is. This race is all about experience. Apple's edge is that it makes the whole stack. It makes the chips, the operating systems, the tools, and the devices. That means Apple can make AI that runs on the device. Fast, private, and helpful. Imagine voice help that understands your photos, your calendar, and where you are without sending your life to a server. To reach that, Apple needs to do two things at once. Inside Apple, keep building stronger neural engines and faster memory so your phone and laptop feel smarter without draining the battery. Outside Apple, bring in small expert teams, one that makes speech sound human, one that lets your device think about images and videos on its own, and one that plans steps to finish a task. Blend those into a new Siri that feels less like a list of links and more like an expert in your pocket. If Apple makes AI quiet, private, and useful, people will stay because it just works. But AI alone won't fix the iPhone problem. How can Apple lower the risk? The parts are already on the table. Vision Pro is a bet on a new kind of computer you wear. Apple Watch is moving toward real health insights, and AirPods became a daily habit. Services bring steady monthly money, so the shift Apple needs is clear. More products that stand on their own. Cash helps. Find health tech that moves from nice stats to real checks. Think blood pressure trends, sleep apnea screening, and needle-free glucose that is accurate enough to matter. Invest to make headsets smaller, lighter, and with better batteries so they move from demo to daily use. Turn Apple TV and HomePod into a local brain for your home so your house feels smart while your data stays with you. Each step moves revenue away from one device and toward a set of everyday must-use moments. That brings up a big question. Can Apple offer lower-cost options without hurting the brand? In many countries, a $1,000 phone is a dream, not a plan. Fighting on raw specs never ends, but winning on experience is Apple's way. The hard part is cost. The screens, the modems, the cameras, they add up. Here's how cash helps. Lock long-term deals on key parts to bring prices down. Invest early in display and camera makers to secure supply. Simplify the lineup so a mid-range iPhone can use last year's top chip without the top price. Then offer service bundles at local prices. Now you have a flywheel. Easier entry, stickier services, higher lifetime value. You keep what the brand stands for. Reliable, private, long-lasting, while opening the door for more people. Meanwhile, the rules are changing. Will new laws force Apple to open up, and can that be good? In some places, Apple must allow other app stores and new payment options. Developers want reach and fair fees. Users want safety and privacy. These goals can fit together. Use cash to build the safest version of open, make a verified app store with clear fees, strong parental controls, and automatic checks for bad apps. Not to spy on developers, but to certify what is safe for users. Bring in security experts who keep apps in safe boxes and track where code comes from. With that, Open is not a loss of control. It becomes a new trust product only Apple can deliver. Now let's keep the business talk simple. Some cash will go to shareholders. That is normal. But a lot should go to new products and services. The clear message is reward owners, 
but keep funding the future so Apple makes better tools for you. Now let's circle back to that big question in the introduction. What does Apple's cash have to do with your power bill? Here's the connection. When Apple has that much money, it can build data centers and chip plants faster than almost anyone else. Those sites use huge amounts of electricity, day and night. As Apple expands AI and cloud services, those power-hungry centers keep growing. Local grids feel the strain, and utilities pass the cost down. Even if you never buy an Apple product, you share the same grid. And when demand goes up, the price of electricity can rise for everybody. It's part of why your bill at home keeps climbing. Finally, let's circle back one last time to the big $36 billion number. Apple's cash is not just caution. It is stored energy. Used well, it becomes quiet chips that make AI feel personal, sensors that turn healthcare into early warning, headsets that feel light and last longer, an ecosystem that is open where it should be and safe where it must be, and a supply chain that bends without breaking when the world throws a curveball. The key choice is not whether Apple can afford this. The key choice is whether Apple moves first where it matters most. If you want to learn more about the rise of AI and how it affects the world we live in, watch this video I made next.